for Olympia, we began with a semi-private tour. Uh, this was an, done in an interesting way. The company uh, set up the thing so that you could contract with them to for one of three different options. One option was to use their bus as transportation from the port to the ruins. The other option was to use their transportation and go along at the ruins and at the museum with them on a guided tour. The third option and the one we chose was to do the transportation, the guided tour, and to have lunch afterwards. And, um, and we're glad we did. It was, it was very nice. It was um, the tour guide, whose name was Johanna, or Joanna in English, was superb. And um, she, she simply couldn't have been better. It, it was not only that she was very knowledgeable about her subject, but also how clear and easily she spoke in English. And it's very tempting to get critical of these guides because English is not their first language and sometimes it's very difficult to understand them. I have to, everyone has to remember that, you know, her English is way better than my Greek, which doesn't exist. I can't understand any Greek. So she's doing way better than I ever could, believe me. But anyway, we, um, we first went to the museum and uh, and she took us through it. She did this on purpose because the entire world goes to the ruins first. And as a result, there are five million people there. If you go to the museum first, you get in the museum and you get to see everything and little short people like me can get right up front where they can actually see something and it's way better. In the museum, she began by showing us a, a model of the ruins of Olympia as they used to be, which was very helpful because then when we went to the actual ruins themselves, she was able to point to this ruined foundation and we could imagine the building because we had seen the model. Um, in addition, there were some really cool things in the museum. And um, anyway, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. We then went to the ruins themselves and wandered around. She guided us through, and then she gave us about a half hour or so on our own. At that point, the bus collected us and we went to lunch. And we went to a really neat Greek restaurant, I suppose it'd be, um, meaning obviously it's in Greece, so it's Greek, but I mean that they serve Greek food. And uh, it was a buffet style place. And, um, and the meal included wine and even a shot of some kind of liqueur or whiskey or some crap that they made that I, I don't know the name of it, but it was right up there with Jägermeister in my view. Jägermeister was Nathan's favorite drink and it was, it's the nastiest stuff. It tastes like gasoline, it's horrid. And this stuff tasted kind of like Jägermeister, it was terrible. 
Um, anyway, so I gave my shot to Dave. This two shots of of liquor on top of a couple of glasses of wine, and he was in fine shape by the time the afternoon was over. Um, but on the way back, he she did a whole thing on olives. Olives. And how they grow them, how they harvest them, how they differentiate between them, the difference between extra virgin, virgin, and all of that stuff, and why she prefers one over the other. And um, it was most informative and, well, shoot. in Dave's opinion, the best part of the entire tour. I couldn't believe it that he was, he saw all those ruins and then he was totally enamored with olives. But we got back to the ship, and uh, uneventfully, and it was just a purely lovely day. This is a statue of Hermes. Dates back about 2,500 years. It was discovered in pieces broken and um, they managed to put it back together again. The base of the statue is new and the hang and the uh, and the thing that it's sitting on, the, the area where it's sitting has been specially designed to um, withstand an earthquake so that this thing won't ever fall over again. It actually will move if there's an earthquake. Dave, would you take a picture of this base? Yeah. Because they do not want to lose this thing again to any sort of wreck and ruin. Hermes is holding an infant. The infant was fathered by Zeus, the god, and um, because the mother, who was not his wife, was killed by seeing him, he snatched the infant as a fetus and stuck it in his thigh, and several months later, it matured and popped out of his thigh, fully formed as an infant. And he gave the infant to Hermes and asked him to take care of him or take him somewhere so he could be raised. And Hera, his wife, Zeus's wife, wouldn't destroy the child in a f jealous rage. Um, the child, who is in Hermes's arm, is um, Dionysus the god of wine. And this is Nike. She's obviously missing her head, or it fell off and got damaged. She's missing her arms and she's missing her wings. But to be as old as she is, she's in pretty good shape, I think. Bronze was very expensive in ancient Greece. What you're looking at are bronze tendrils that were on statues. They're hair tendrils. And over here are some fragments of toes and feet and somebody's ear right there. And these are the statues that were recovered from
from the pediment of the Temple of Zeus, dedicated to Zeus, in the Olympic area. Um, obviously, they removed all of this, and it's in the building to protect it. And they've put the fragments where they belong, and some of them are missing, of course. But anyway, that's the. This is the is the um, pediment from one side, and on the other side of the room, you can see the pediment from the other side of the building, the other end of the building. Let me walk a little closer. The statue in the middle is Zeus, the headless thing, is Zeus because he always stood in the middle because he was the big shit and it was his temple. And here is his a king and his wife who didn't have a head and, and then their servants go out there. To the other side is his successor with a long nasty story about him. His daughter, the king's daughter, who married this guy, and their servants and horses and chariots and crap out to the end of the pediment. And you see how it goes in a uh, triangle. This is the stadium. 600 feet long. And you can see the white blocks there. That's the starting block. And this was the canopy entrance. Since it's fallen in on the top. And there's the gate. Okay, this is the statue of Nike, the one in the museum. This is where she was. And she stood up there. And here is a drawing. A drawing of what she looked like with her wings and everything in place. so we can get on Wi-Fi. And as you can see, the weather has gone all to hell. Sail away from Catacolon. 
hell, I can't say it. Catacalon, I think that's right. Anyway, Olympia. And we're headed south, or will be, to circle around the bottom of Greece and tomorrow we'll be in Athens.